Hi, I'm Justine Burt, Chief Green Officer for Green Walla. I'm here interviewing Taryn Norris, the Associate Director of the Breakthrough Generation at the Breakthrough Institute. Taryn, could you tell me about the National Energy Education Act that you're advocating for? You know, every so often in American history, there are sort of monumental challenges that really demand bold vision and government leadership. Um, and really at these sort of critical junctures, it's really imperative that people like you and me and our government um, really take, you know, massive and immediate action to secure our nation's future. Um, and, you know, this happened 50 years ago um, in the wake of the launch of Sputnik. Um, the federal government authorized the National Defense Education Act. And uh, what it did is it provided billions of dollars uh, to inspire and train a new generation to really rise to the Soviet challenge and win the space race. And uh, it was a really a critical first step in developing the human capital that was necessary to develop all the technologies that not only won the space race, but really launched the, our entire world into the information age. Um, and today, you know, we really face a new challenge, which is the energy challenge. Um, you know, the United States is an energy crisis. Um, energy prices are rapidly escalating. You know, imported energy dependency is increasing. Global warming continues unabated. And all across the world, there are billions of people who continue to live without access to energy. Um, and so really at the dawn of the 21st century, really our greatest challenge is energy. Um, and you know, just as you know, in the wake of the launch of Sputnik and the Soviet challenge, just as we passed the National Defense Education Act to inspire and train a new generation to confront that challenge, we really, we've got to do the same today with energy. Um, and so the National Energy Education Act would be modeled after the National Defense Education Act to provide billions of dollars for new clean energy education and research at our institutions of higher education. Um, and <clears throat> last week, myself and my colleague Jesse Jenkins wrote two op-eds, um, one in the San Francisco Chronicle and the other in the Baltimore Sun, really making the case for this. Um, and you know, it really wouldn't even, it would hardly <laughs> require much money. Um, you know, currently we spend as the United States about $1.5 billion a day on foreign oil. Um, a National Energy Education Act would cost around $1.5 billion a year, and then over five years would be around $7.5 billion, or comparable to what the National Defense Education Act was 50 years ago. It's, it's been interesting. I'm, I'm 40 now, and I've been hearing for the last 20 years that you know, people who want to shrink the size of government, government doesn't serve any useful purpose, we need to you know, shrink it to the size that we can take it into the bathtub and kill it, you know, kind of Grover yeah. Norquist kind of attitude about government. But I think we've been missing out on the potential investment that you talk about. I mean, government has a very important role to play, research, oversight, safety net infrastructure, and those things are falling apart. So I, I love that you're talking about investing in the future. Do you think other people in your generation are, are ready for this, hungry for this, think it's important? Yeah. You know, absolutely. And you know, I think that, you know, especially my generation is really sort of ready for a new sort of inspirational new purpose for our nation, really. And I think a lot of the sort of youth engagement around some of the political candidates today and sort of the outpouring of youth interest in politics really indicates that people and young people especially are ready for a new governance for the 21st century. Um, and sort of in the wake of all the, you know, all the political problems we've had over the past eight years with the administration, the young people are ready for um, new leadership in this country. And, you know, I think that, you know, there's been a lot of talk that, well, we can just, you know, sort of set up a, a price on carbon, either through just cap and trade um, or just a carbon tax. And I actually think that some of that comes from this idea, which is what you, you alluded to, which is sort of a market fundamentalism, um, which says that, you know, really the government can never, should never pick and choose winners and that all, you know, the, the, we can just set a price on carbon and the market will solve it. But, you know, what that really doesn't sort of remember is that so many of the sort of economic transitions we've gone through in the past really relied upon large-scale government investments in new infrastructure, new technology, and new education. Um, so whether you're talking about, you know, the initial railroads back in the 1800s um, to, you know, the World War II challenge um, to post-World War II, you know, investments in new highways, and then, of course, with the National Defense Education Act, and then everything thereafter from investments and in, you know developing microchips and uh, in the internet all of these really contributed to major sort of economic transitions and to really to, to make that happen today to you know to unleash a clean energy economy 
we also need um, you know, major public investments in the necessary infrastructure, technology, and education. Um, so we also need a price on carbon, absolutely. We should get a higher price on carbon as we can achieve politically and that's sustainable to the American people. But we also need to make sure that the government is providing the leadership that's also necessary um, to make this transition. So, so we, you know, at the Breakthrough Institute, we've been advocating, you know, investments at least $50 billion a year um, in clean energy infrastructure, technology, and education. And where sort of our young leaders initiative is starting out with this is we want to, you know, we're demanding that, you know, the next Congress and the next administration really get clear eyed about this and start with a National Energy Education Act, which we think will really lay the groundwork for the much bolder and larger investments that we need. Thank you, Taryn.